Welcome to BrandonVot.com, where today I'm interviewing a good friend of mine, Jennifer Fulweiler, who's a well-known blogger at ConversionDiary.com and also the author of a new and uh, highly anticipated book, which I'll mention in a second. Jennifer was born and raised in an atheist household and remained that way for much of her young adult life until she met her husband, Joe, and began reading a couple Christian books and interacting with some online Christians, all of whom cracked her lifelong atheism and encouraged her to begin exploring faith. She did, and by Easter 2007, she decided to enter the Catholic Church a little bit more than seven years ago. She has since recounted that entire journey in her new memoir called Something Other Than God, How I Passionately Sought Happiness and Accidentally Found It. The book, which has been in the works for many years, just launched today, uh, Tuesday, April 29th, and it's drawing rave reviews from everybody who's read an advanced copy. Uh, I got to read an early edition and loved it. Uh, Dean Kuntz is one of the endorsers and said that he read the whole thing in one sitting and deeply enjoyed it. Some of the other endorsements include people like Gretchen Rubin from The Happiness Project and Cardinal Timothy Dolan of New York. So Jen's joining me to discuss her memoir and uh, talk about her journey from atheism to Catholicism. Before we begin, Jen, thanks uh, for stopping by and welcome. Well, thank you. It's absolutely a pleasure to be here. Now, let's begin by talking about your childhood. You know, you write in the book, uh, you spend several chapters describing sort of the environment and the worldview that you had growing up. Talk a little bit about that. Well, it, you know, I got my uh, childhood belief system really from my dad. He's he's an engineer, very very logical. Uh, he always said that his hero was Doctor Spock, you know, because he's he's so logical, and or Mister Spock. I, I was corrected on that recently. I guess Mister Spock. A- anyway, because you know, my dad just loves reason and, and logic. And the interesting thing about my childhood, though, and I think you'll see this in the book, is that I wasn't raised to be an atheist per se as much as I was raised to seek truth, question assumptions, and take whatever I believed and follow it to its logical conclusions, to really think through whatever worldview it was that I chose. And, um, and that's something that obviously you know, served me very well as I, as I went out on a search for truth in adulthood. Now, along your path of religious exploration, um, you did stop to explore different Protestant traditions, but you never really found Protestantism to be uh, really compelling. The choice seemed to be between either atheism or Catholicism. And so why is that? Why did you never feel drawn toward the Protestant traditions of Christianity? Um, For me, the need for authority was abundantly clear and and that's something that I think you know walking <laughs> walking through it with me in in the book you'll see that um you know I didn't go to Sunday school as a child except you know occasionally tagging along with friends and um you know which led to all sorts of embarrassing incidents from you know because I knew nothing about the bible and um so you know I, I when I when I first opened the bible I opened it on page one because, you know, it's a book. You read it cover to cover. And, you know, I would get deep into the Old Testament and be like, what? What? Like, what is going on here? Because, you know, it's Jesus's book. So I thought Jesus would come in on page, like, what, 30, 40? And I'd be in Deuteronomy, you know, like, what is going on down here? So um, I I was so confused by the Bible. And and I didn't see a lot of the Christian moral code spelled out with with crystal clarity. And as a busy mom, I did not have time to gain an encyclopedic knowledge of the Bible to be able to, you know, interpret the scriptures in, in concert with one another. And so the need for an authority to say how how what is the correct interpretation and, you know, what are we supposed to do with these scriptures was immediately clear to me. Now, as you started to make inroads into Catholicism, you were visiting a couple parishes, you were reading some Catholic books, but then all of a sudden you were stopped in your tracks by one of the biggest roadblocks to faith, and that's the Catholic Church's teachings on contraception. Um, talk to me how you about how you worked your way through that. Right, okay, yeah, great question. Um, that was obviously a huge, huge issue for me because, um, you know, I had certainly been uh, pro-choice, but e- even more than that, I mean... I, I didn't know that there was an anti-contraception position. Like I, I didn't, it, 
I, like when I was in college and early adulthood, I was truly ignorant of the fact that anyone opposed contraception. I thought it was like air or water, you know, just something that is a, a human need that every all humans must have. And so when I heard that the the church was against it, my first reaction was not to understand why it was relevant. And and I think that a lot of people, um, you know, are in that position today. They might even be Catholics, but they they just don't understand like why is the church bossing us around on this area? You know, why, why does it matter? And so, um, you know, I, it just, it made me question whether the church could really be guided by God because it doesn't seem like a, a God guided church would mess this up. And then meanwhile, as I was exploring my, my issues with, with abortion and my, you know, I, I came to this place where I felt like abortion was wrong but I also felt like I had to support it. And I think you'll see in the book, this was, this was a great moment of tension for me, of not liking abortion, feeling like it's bad for women, but I felt like I had to be pro-choice. And I had this huge moment where it clicked for me that the reason that I thought that I had to support abortion was because I, I felt like it was the only way for women to have freedom over their bodies. Because we live in this culture that tells women, even if you think it would ruin your life, to have a baby, even if you are absolutely not ready to become a mother, go ahead and participate in the act that creates babies anyway, and just hope it works out. You know, I, I really go into uh, how much the women of my generation were told that, you know, sexual activity does not have to have life changing consequences. But, you know, the actual use failure rates for contraception are abysmal. And so I, I just had so many of my friends who ended up in abortion clinics because, you know, suddenly the act that they were told didn't have life changing consequences was about to have life changing consequences. And the only way to make that problem go away, they thought, you know, was was to go to the abortion clinic. So anyway, it, it's hard to explain verbally. I, I think it'll be much more clear when people read the book. But basically, the short answer is I came to see that the lies of contraceptive culture take away women's freedom. And when I realized that the church has always told this truth and that the church is the only one that still tells this truth, I realized, you know, I, I, I see something divine at work here. Now, in many ways, your journey to the Catholic Church, as you lay it out in the book, is a journey of books. You know, I know you've, for your entire life, been a deep reader, uh, a fellow bibliophile. Uh, what would you say are three paradigm-shifting books that changed your, your worldview or significantly impacted it? You know, you know what a tough question that is. I mean, it's it's so hard to choose like, oh, which books are my favorite? I, I would say, you know, the books that um, most profoundly led me to, you know, aha moments would one would simply be the catechism because um, it, it was like I had found the owner's manual to the human soul. And, and also I had found this worldview that was perfectly internally consistent. Even when I wasn't sure if I agreed with it, I saw an internal consistency that I had never seen in another worldview. Um, the second one, I think, would actually be Lee Strobel's book, The Case for Christ. Um, you know, he's a Protestant, former atheist, and he just did a really good job of very concisely and directly hitting some some common objections about, you know, faith in Christ. And, um, you know, it, even I read it when I was an atheist and it didn't convince me whole cloth, you know, right the first moment I read it. But it did make me think, you know, may, maybe I should actually give this a second look. Maybe I should uh, look a little further into this. And um, oh, I, I guess the final one would definitely have to be Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. And, and the title of my book is actually based on a quote from, from Mere Christianity. And um, C.S. Lewis is so plain spoken and so direct and so easy to read. And um, in fact, I might even put Mere Christianity as, as number one, because that, that book really, I, I have a special place in my heart for, for that book, because it was, it was when I was reading that, that, um, that I really started to, to think that maybe there's actually something to this, this religion. And let me throw in the caveat that a lot of times people hear that and they open up their email while I'm still talking and they're like, oh, I'm, I'm going to tell my atheist cousin she has to read this. One thing to know, and, and, and you'll see this, you know, in, when you read, is um, I had already 
gotten to a place of openness. I had even said my first prayer before I read these books. If someone had given me these books when I was in college, at the height of my atheism, I would have just laughed at them. So, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not a cure-all for everyone who doesn't believe, but for someone who is in that place of openness, um, I, I think that they, you know, they can be very compelling reads. You know, G.K. Chesterton described his own uh, journey to Catholicism as, in a sense, coming home. You know, he said he had to travel all around the world to just get back to where he started. And you end your book in a similar way. The last line in your book, you say, my conversion was less of a journey to a foreign place and more a discovery of a long lost home. What did you mean by that? Well, one of the things that I talk about all throughout the book was um, that I was aware, very vaguely aware, that I was baptized Catholic. My mother's parents were Catholic, and that was, you know, just something that you did in an Irish Catholic family. And, you know, my, my dad didn't care. I mean, he's like, all right, the priest wants to pour water over the baby's head, you know, whatever. And um, I, I, I was never in a church again with my parents. You know, we, we never went to church as a family. Um, after that, it was my baptism was not discussed. It was not really on my radar. But as I, I drew closer to the church, I kept, I kept feeling this pull. It was like, you know, I kind of couldn't get away. It was like the tractor beam had been initiated. And, and when I looked back, I realized that, you, you know, I, I think early in my conversion, I had thought of baptism as symbolic, like, like a cultural thing. But I realized that, you know, when, when you're baptized, it, it is, you know, according to the catechism, it is an indelible mark. I mean, something real happens there. You are marked as belonging to Christ. And so when I reflected back on my conversion, I realized that actually I had belonged to Christ all along. Excellent. Well, again, I want to encourage everybody to pick up Jennifer's new book, Something Other Than God, which is clearly one of the year's top books and also one of the most evocative and beautiful memoirs I've read in a, in a really long time. Uh, Jennifer, where can people go online to find out more about your writing and to pick up a copy of the book? Uh, my blog is conversiondiary.com and you can check out Amazon, Barnes & Noble or get it. It's The book is available anywhere uh, books are sold. Wonderful. And for more interviews, articles, book reviews and more, check out my own site, brandonvot.com. Thanks for tuning in.